minutes before the official start. Um, last time we looked at uh, OpenStreetMap and Leaflet. This time I'm doing something totally different. Um, I got a little bit bored with the other thing, but you know, let's see what we can do. Uh, today we'll be looking at um, trying to create a star map uh, in JavaScript. Uh, and again, I'm cheating. I've done this before. And I'm actually going to do it wrong because I know that 3.js, which is a 3D library, will not work. Uh, to do this, but it's actually really interesting to explore. So we will we will take a look at it for purely the reason of exploring it, even though uh, even though it's not going to do what we want in terms of giving us a star map. Uh, partly because it's the number of stars we're going to map uh, ultimately is like over two hundred sixty thousand, uh, and the number of stars we're going to map at first is going to be just the visible stars which is uh, closer to 2,000, which, uh, you know, 3JS might be able to handle um, 2,000 stars, 2,000 spheres. I'm not sure it can handle uh, 220, uh, 200,000 spheres. So I'm going to do a little bit more patter here because I did say we would start at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, which is noon Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, and, well, probably some sort of time elsewhere in the world, too. Um, so I'm going to give this another 30 seconds or so, and let's see if anyone is, of course I only announced it like two seconds ago, so probably no one's going to show up, unless you're one of those people who looks for really low uh, viewer uh, Twitch streams on the Twitch, uh, in, ca in which case I welcome you of course, but I'm just saying, probably not. Okay, we've got another 15 seconds to kill. Uh, the temperature in Albuquerque is not 91 degrees, but the weather service thinks it is. I have corrected them on that. Uh, but no, it is it is pretty cold here, but I'm inside, so I don't care. Okay, and we are now... Uh, okay, so we are now uh, we are now ready to go live. Uh, so hello, everybody who's... No one's here, actually. But if you were, I'd say hello. Okay, so the, what we want to do here is we're going to use the 3.js library, which is different from d3.js, by the way. This is 3.js, which is a 3D library. Uh, D3 is a, a design library, very nice, but we're not using it today. And once again, I'm going to do the uh, sort of nice thing here, and I'm going to bring up, uh, I'm going to put the library here directly in uh, into the replit instead of calling it from its uh, CDN source. Uh, and I'm not sure how much that actually helps. It might even hurt. But it does mean I get to use the version I'm familiar with, which should, of course, be uh, similar to uh, all other versions. But let's see what's going on here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So this is basically the reason that no one should listen to this live stream. Because basically, okay, here it is. Basically, I'm doing this all on the fly. I don't have anything prepared for you guys. Um, so maybe one day someone will take the recording, filter out all the crap, and the two minutes that left that's left that's useful, they will... Uh, so let's go ahead and create a folder called lib. Um, let's see, add file now. Nope. There's a way to add folder here. And here it is, add folder. And we will call this lib because we do want to be kind of nice in our naming scheme. And then we will do an upload. which we can do like this. And we're going to get the minimized version of 3, uh, 3JS, and we are going to put it in lib. So very nice. We've done that now. Um, so now we are actually ready to get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at what I've done before, cheating. And we're going to put this into script.js, but I'm going to do it slowly so we, so we all get an understanding of what's going on here, uh, except me, because either I already understand it and I've totally forgotten everything. So... Okay, this is a little bit ugly, and this is almost cut and paste code. It, well, in fact, it is going to be. I'm cutting and pasting it from another one of my things, but this is also cut and paste code you'll see in the documentation uh, for 3JS. This is a fairly basic code. So let me see. Now, unfortunately, this thing won't let me. Um, I can't cut and paste directly, but I have X clipboard, which lets me cut and paste directly, which is very strange. So let's just talk about what this is doing here. First of all, we want to know how big of a space 3JS is going to be using on our screen. And because we're doing it in two different ways, one, we're doing it sort of here uh, in a little mini screen, and we're doing it here in sort of a full screen mode, uh, we're just going to let cheat and let it be the height and width of the window. 
Uh, that later on may not be a good idea, but that's fine. Now, the camera view angle is going to be 45, and I've forgotten what that means, um, but we'll find out. Um, and it just, of course, means how we're going to point the camera. Um, the aspect is the width over height. This is, um, this is basically, um, this is basically how the camera is going to render things given that it knows what the frame looks like, I think. The near and far uh, variables, and you know what, let's go ahead and bring up some 3.js documentation. And hopefully there's nothing bad there in my list of, really should disable that feature. Uh, but hopefully there's nothing bad there. Tutorial, we will, and we're going to look at some very basics. Um, in fact, let's look at the docs. Here we go, docs. Creating the scene. So blah, 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 blah. Here is the, um, here is the, here is the, some of the documentation here. Um, basically all of this crap we need to build a camera. And let's see if we can find, see, well, these are, okay. Let's actually look for, we, we can actually, uh, we're going to use this in a camera in just a second. We can actually, we can actually learn, um, we can actually learn, not, not like this, what the parameters are for a camera or a camera. Fortunately, Google corrects me on that. Okay, camera is the base abstract class. So a bunch of stuff we're not going to care about because it's done automatically for us. Um, okay, and we are going to be creating a perspective camera, I think. Yes, we are. So that then you'll see where these values are coming from. So perspective camera. And so what we're using here is the camera thrust from vertical field of view. That's the number of degrees you can see in, in, the, in the camera. Uh, if you make it really large, it looks like a sort of like a fisheye lens. Uh, and then the aspect is the camera thrust from blah, 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 near and far plane. This means the camera won't show us anything that's closer than near or further than far, uh, which is useful if you have things that get too close to the camera. And it's sort of efficient if you have things that are really far away from the camera that you wouldn't be able to see anyway. It won't even try to render those things. So we've pretty much defined this here. So now we're going to go and do our next little cheat here. Uh, we're going to actually contain, no, not. We're going to actually, um, OK. So this is, I could just have cut and paste all of this, but I won't. Um, well, I will, but a little bit at a time. Okay, so we actually now need to put the uh, three uh, the 3D canvas somewhere. Uh, I called it container. Now, of course, to do that, we actually need to create a container here. Um, and let's create it before we call the script because otherwise it won't be available to the script. Um, let's see where I do that here. And that's really just very simply um, just using a div ID to do this. And that's really very simple. So now we have a container to put it in. Going back here, that's not what I meant to do. It's interesting though. Um, okay, so now we have a container. Okay, so now we need to um, to create a renderer, which is basically a lot of these steps are the sort of the basic cut and paste stuff you have to do before you can do anything interesting. Uh, I am trying to uh, sort of explain them, but to be honest, I don't fully understand them myself. Uh, once you actually get into the scene and start looking at 3D objects, you can mess with these and see what they do. For right now, I'm pretty much just going to cut and paste this. Um, okay, and this is going to be sort of a big cut and paste, but I will try to explain some of it. Okay, we need to create a render. That's the machine that does all the putting pixels on the screen. We create a camera, as promised, with a view angle of 45, aspect ratio that matches the, uh, the frame that we're looking at, and a near and far ratio of 0.1. I don't know what these units are. Uh, I think they're arbitrary uh, because you can use the same units in 3JS, and it'll just 0.1 whatever units we're using, 10,000 whatever units we're watching. Um, okay, and then we create a scene which is we can create multiple scenes, but we're just going to create one for this one. And this is a step some people forget to do. Um, if you create an empty scene, there's no camera in it. The camera you created exists, but it's like on the shelf or something. You actually need to add it to the scene. 
So at this point, we actually should be able to run this and nothing will happen. Yep, or maybe we won't. Um, three is not defined. Yes, because, of course, if you're going to use a library, it's really, really useful to include it in your documentation, in your uh, main page. Freeman JS, so that's... Uh, and so now, let's see, it probably won't do much anyway, but it shouldn't give me errors. Okay, so... Brilliant! There's absolutely nothing there. And let's go to the full version and just to enjoy our nothingness. Brilliant! Just very white. Of course, that's because we haven't added anything to the scene yet. We just have a blank, empty scene. So now we're going to add some stuff to the scene now. I, you have to do a little bit of experimentation here, at least I do, because I keep forgetting um, the way the camera's angled and stuff. You don't want to print to some place that doesn't actually exist. Um, we're going to start by doing exactly what I attached. Sorry. Um, okay, let's see how the camera... I'm going to try skipping a step here to see if this works. We're not going to do create anything very exciting, not even an uh, actual physical object. We're just going to create a point light uh, and see what happens. So that's just a, a single point of light. Uh, if you had a thousand of them, you could run for political office. And no one here is old enough to get that joke. Okay, so we're going to make the light FFFFFF. That is white, so that's actually not a good idea because our background is white. So let's make a red light. Okay. So I'm going to make a red light, put it at X10, Y50, Z180, and then again, one of the things people tend to forget with 3JS is if you create something, it's not going to show up anywhere. It's just sort of on the shelf. You have to add it to your scene. If you have multiple scenes, you have to decide which scene you're going to add it to. So this may do something, and it may not. It's, it's difficult to tell. Um, yep, that did nothing. Okay, that is because I skipped a step to see if it could be skipped. Um, let's see. We have a renderer here, but we haven't told it what to render yet. So... Mm, did I lose my ad camera somehow? Yikes. Um, okay, so I create the camera. Um, okay, hmm. I apparently screwed that up by getting rid of my... So that might have been it. I don't know how I did that, but I have a recording. I can watch it. Um, so let's try that again. This still won't work because we haven't actually told the render what to render, but I like running things that don't work, so that's just me. Um, and there's still nothing's happening. Okay. Now that we've added the camera, um, let's see. Renders. We have to set the size of the render, and somewhere I think we actually have to uh, connect the renderer to a scene. But I could be wrong about that. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's see what we're doing here. And we have to attach the renderer to the uh, div element we created earlier. Again, a lot of this, to be honest, I don't understand. Uh, this is like sort of the garbage you have to do before you can do anything real. So we'll start the renderer. This doesn't actually start the renderer. Um, mm. Okay. So this comment is wrong. Oh, uh, this sets the size of the render, and this is actually probably... Uh, let's go ahead and change that comment. This is probably what actually starts it, by uh, actually putting it somewhere in th on the document. But I don't know for sure, um, so I'm going to put a little question mark here. Now, will something happen? I don't know. It might, but it'll not look really great, but it might. Okay, well now, at least, we have some... Um, we have a nice black scene with nothing in it, so what happened to our point light? Well there's nothing for it to shine on. I don't know if you can... you probably could look directly at the point light. Um, and we might actually try that. Uh, let's see. So position 10, Y50, Z130. Um, unfortunately, I forget how the camera looks at things. 
Um, so the view angle, I don't know how, well, you can, I do know how to move the camera, but for right now, this isn't very helpful. So that's okay. Um, I think we do need some sort of light to see things. So now I'm going to create some actual stuff, physical objects here. And again, uh, this is not quite as bad, uh, but some of it, again, is cut and paste uh, just from somewhere else. Um, and again, this may be, hopefully we're going to get further than just this cut and paste crap I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to start at line 45. The sphere material, now uh, this is uh, mesh Lambert material color. See, see this is sort of a, a, a white-ish color, which I don't like, so I'm going to change it. Sorry, a, a reddish color. I'm going to change it to pure red. Actually, maybe I shouldn't do that because I have red light. Um, the the uh, reflectivity properties of something depend on the material you cover it with. Now, Lambert material actually, uh, the, the Lambert surface reflects light equally in all directions. That sounds strange because when you do ray tracing, it's not like that at all, but um, but it is actually more useful because it represents real spheres better. Uh, light is scattered in all directions. It is not scattered directly back in the direction it came from. Uh, so we create this, uh, radius 50. Segments and rings uh, will tell you how well defined the sphere is going to look. It turns out drawing spheres is really hard. So what uh, what 3JS does is actually draw a polyhedron uh, that has that looks like a sphere. And 1616 16 will make the sphere look pretty good. We can lo we will lower those numbers, and you can see that the sphere starts looking more and more uh, like a cube or like a like a polyhedron. Okay, so now we have to create our sphere right here in line 50, um, and it's called sphere geometry, and it's just one of those weird things, uh, and sphere material. So and now. I'm pretty sure this worked past time. I'm gonna, the sphere starts out at 0, 0, 0. Uh, I don't want to change its x and y coordinates, but I will put it down below in the z-axis, and I'm pretty sure this will allow us to see it. And of course, again, created it, need to add it to the scene. Now, if I run this, we might actually see um, a sphere. Uh, but maybe not, you know, you never know. Yep, no sphere. Cool. Okay, let me see if I can do something a little bit better. Um, ah, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't actually, the renderer, it exists, it's in the scene, but we haven't told it to render anything yet. So we actually have to tell it, the renderer depends on both the scene we're looking at and the camera we're using. So you could have multiple cameras on the same scene and they would render differently. So I'm going to copy and paste one little piece of it uh, that should do what we want although the rate we're going, maybe not. Uh, obviously, later we're going to want this in a loop or something because we don't want to just render the scene once. If we change it, we want it to continue rendering. Uh, but let's see if this is good. Yay, there it is. It is our lovely red sort of sphere-like thing. Um, and we're good. So that is, of course, it could be Antares. It could be uh, Beetlejuice, which you can only say two more times before something bad happens. Um, or any red star, but of course it is really just a red sphere for right now. Okay, so now um, let's see if we can move the. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. We can do quite a bit of things from here. Um, we could add different colored spheres, and in fact, we could even make them sort of random colored. We could try moving the camera, and, and in fact, let's do that. So right now we know the camera is looking straight down the z-axis. Uh, and we do know how to move the camera. I, I did at one point at least. Um, if I can figure out how, this would be great. And if not, we can look at the documentation. So, apparently not. And this is the this is the part of the stream that someone should really be. If anyone gives a rat's ass, should really be uh, really be cutting out. Um, okay. Um, so let's go back to our perspective camera. See what we can do with it. Um, again, this is the boring stuff. Focus, FOV, and focus really can make a difference, but it's not very interesting to us right now. Um, get effective film height. A lot of crap here but we can actually change where the camera is to help points. 
Um, set view offset. Zoom is one of the methods uh, you can actually use and change the zoom, but it's not really that interesting because it doesn't move the camera, it just sort of sets the zoom feature on the camera, which is different than moving the camera. Um, let's see if we can find camera's perspective. Right, we have to actually look at perspective. Camera is too generic, we need to look at perspective camera. Um, I hope, no idea what I'm doing. Um, Get film with, get focal length. This is all a lot of set view offset. Oh, come on, there's got to be more to this. Okay, now I'm going to try to figure out how the hell I moved a camera once. So if I could do it once, I can maybe do it again. Of course, uh, part of that will be finding out where the hell I keep my code. Very difficult. Probably the most difficult thing I have to do. Um, and let's see, there is a... You can't see this, but I have... I looked where I have 3 min.js, and that's in a lot of freaking places, just so you know. Um, of course, not all of it... Oh, here we are. It turns out I have a map page uh, on you know, GitHub Pages that does use the, uh, the, the moves the camera around, or actually moves the sphere around, but no, I don't... that's not there. Um, let's see. Wow. Well, I have no idea then what the hell this is doing. Um. Okay, I found it. I think. Wow. My stuff is a serious mess. But you probably knew that. Okay. Let's see. I think I finally got to where I need to be. Okay. Okay, I'm going to... It turns out this actually... Oh, here we are. Yeah. You can change the camera position with camera... Camera.position gives you the, uh, the location of the camera. Um, so let me... I'm going to just cut and paste these. We can't use these uh, directly because we don't have the variables defined. But this is good stuff. So I will put it in here. This is how you move the camera around and look at can tell you where... Uh, of course, this is... Uh, cut and paste code from elsewhere. And of course this is um, not code we can actually use because it comes from a different, uh, comes from something totally different. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move the position of the camera oh, I wonder if this works as nice as it should by 0 .01 and again we'll have to render it. Again, this is obviously not the correct way to do things, but let's do this. I have no idea if that worked. Let's move it a little bit more and see if that works. That doesn't appear to work. Okay, and it might be because one of these things, like the renderer, uh, doesn't run in real time. Um, I mean, it's, it's asynchronous, as we would say. Yep, doesn't look like it's working. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it the correct way, which is... Um, I wonder how many times I'm saying, um, probably a lot, uh, which is to, we're going to create a function that updates the animation. I'm just going to call it update, pretty boring name here. And for right now, what it's going to do is, um, Wow. Okay. It's going to be really, really boring. It's going to... Well, let's go ahead and move the camera a little bit. Now, this is going to happen pretty quickly, so I'm going to make it move... Uh, this still might be too fast, actually. Yeah, and of course, we mean position X. And now we're going to render the scene. And... Now we want to do this over and over again, so we could, in theory, 
uh, call update over and over again. But it turns out you don't really want to do that because JavaScript has a special function, which I think I will Google just because I really like it, called request animation frame. And that actually lets JavaScript handle how fast it, you know, your machine handle. Oops, I didn't want to do that. And that actually, it's a window function, but since we include, we're in a window, it's not a huge deal. Um, and this is actually better because it, it actually lets, you know, you don't end up calling it too frequently. JavaScript can adjust or your machine can adjust how quickly it wants to animate things. Okay. So, and we haven't written, we actually, so let's do this. And the update is the function we want to call over and over again. So let's do this, uh, maybe. Okay. And now, of course, we actually, now this calls it every time, except we haven't called it after we call it one time. So we have to, we sort of, sort of have to um, schedule the first frame, which is, which is going to do everything for us again. Okay. Let's run this. And as you can see, for some reason, increasing the X position, god damn it, um, of the camera, or decreasing it rather, makes the sphere move away from us, which is, uh, I don't know why. Let's see. So our camera is moving on the x-axis looking down. That is sort of a strange view that we're going to do there. Um, but okay. So that's what happens. Um, now one other thing we can do here while we're, and we don't need to do this of course anymore because we're doing it in the loop. Now, one thing we could do right now is we could also, you'll notice it's sort of sliding off the edge of the screen because we are moving down the x-axis and it's sort of fudging a little bit. We can also just have the, uh, so even as we're moving away, we can continue looking at it by doing a camera look at uh, zero, zero, zero. I think that'll work. I'm going to check and cheat a little bit here. See what I said zero to, but I'm pretty sure, whoa. Uh, well, let's see if this works. Again, we might use some uh, introspection sort of stuff. Okay, didn't like that. Camera is not defined. Nope. Not when you spell it that way, it's not. Okay, the console seems unhappy. Oh, I'm sorry. We want to look at the uh, the sphere, which is actually zero zero minus three hundred. So let's do that. Not working too well. Um, we'll now take a moment to reflect why that doesn't work. Um, Alrighty, and we're going to now just run it again, and I'm going to go ahead and do a download as zip, something I should be doing more often, because we are at a point where the code is working, even if it's not working as well as I'd want it to. Okay, so now the question is, do we want, so we, now instead of, um, let's go ahead and actually look at what the camera uh, thinks its look at is right now. And that, again, this is an introspection here. And right now, this we're going to do nothing with animation frames. All right, this is the camera. It's a perspective camera. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know if... Uh, I'm going to try to avoid searching, but at some point I'm going to have to. Frustrum called... This is, there's a lot of crap we have. Its position, by the way, so you know, is jumping around the screen. No, sorry. Its position is... Zero, 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 which is what we expect. Rotation is zero, zero, zero. And we, I don't know if it's look at as defined or something that changes th these parameters. Projection matrix is actually fairly interesting, but, but, but not to us at this moment. Let's see if look at appears anywhere in the, uh, okay, it does not. And that sort of makes sense because look at probably changes other elements of the camera. Um, so now, one thing that's sort of curious here is this up variable, which says, 
the up variable is north, which is 0, 1, 0 uh, in, in standard map notation. Let's, let's look at that. Let's change that and see what happens when we change that. So let's console log, um, and let's change the camera's look at. And if we're doing this correctly, it lo its look at should now be down. Um, and let's be clever and only log what we want to look at, which is, of course, camera dot up. See if that changes things. Um, camera dot up here as well. And of course, we can't put this in a loop because we're not—we're not ready to loop yet. Actually, are we? Well, we'll find out. Okay, so camera look at apparently does not change. Um, what the direction of up is. Um, there was something else there that looked good that I've forgotten about now. So apparently up is not the thing we're looking for. What we are looking for, a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, helpful for the camera itself, but not uh, helpful to us. So cast shadow, elements, elements. The matrix will probably change, but that's going to be, a, I'm trying to do it without having to look at that. Up, position, now that's just the camera's position, that shouldn't change. The rotation might be the thing um, that is changing. So let's take a look at that. And I am having imposter syndrome right now, but it turns out I am an imposter, so I'm okay with that. So let's look at this. Oh, okay, interesting. So now, and this, these NANs are not bad because uh, we're taking like the you know the tangent of 90 degrees or something, which is really undefined. But that does change the rotation of the camera. So uh, the rotation started at a zero zero zero, which is a bizarre kind of undefined rotation, and now it's something that's undefined in a different way. So that's kind of lame. Um, so let's see what happens if we. This should actually do nothing because the camera should already be looking at zero zero zero, but it that's actually interesting. So the camera was not looking at oh be, because maybe because we set it to that's interesting. Did we actually ever do anything with that? Um, wow. So maybe that would be sort of interesting to see what is the uh, camera's oh this is the camera's initial position is zero 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 undefined rotation. If we make it look at zero zero zero. However, that's different from the initial. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, let's make it look at the y axis. Let's make it look up the y axis. Um, let's make it look at a diagonal so we don't end up with these tangent numbers. So let's make it look sort of at 45 degrees at the plane level. That still might give us some NANs. Okay, that doesn't help at all. Let's make it look at 111. This should probably. Okay, I'm apparently looking at the wrong thing because this is not doing anything interesting. Um, okay, so why do we do all that? I have no idea. Um, so, okay, we're going to kind of jump a little bit here. And we're going to just try to paint sort of random stars on the background, or random spheres on the background. Um, and that will... Um, give us sort of get us closer to our goal of, of putting stars on the screen. So let's go ahead and so okay. So what we're going to do here is let's see mesh. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to create an array of spheres, which we'll call spheres. And we're going to set it to the empty array because you have to do that. And then we're going to say, for let's say a hundred of them, um, we're going to declare the ith sphere to be. Hang on one second. Um, oh great, we have to create a new. Lambert Thresh material. Um, so we might actually be able to get away with 
with uh, doing that without having to actually create. Okay, so we're just going to copy this code, except where it says sphere material, we're actually going to go ahead and create it on the fly. And obviously we need to change some of these positions. So for right now, let's just leave sphere material as the, the global constant. And so they're all going to be identical spheres for now. And now we're going to use the math random function to put them between 0 and 1. And we can obviously change that later. And I think we should be able to do this. And we're not using seeded random numbers. JavaScript doesn't actually have them. So it will look different every time. Uh, let's make sure we haven't done anything terrible. We probably no longer need a single sphere to be created. But we do need to still add the... Oh yeah, good. See, I, I forgot. Uh, obviously we need to add this new sphere we've created to the seat. Is that it? So in the main one we're still going to... No, let's see. Render, render. Um, and I think we can actually get rid of this too. This was just sort of a one-off we were playing with. So now, the update function won't really do anything because we're ha we have a fixed scene. But if this works correctly, we should see about 100. We won't see all 100 of them because they're going to be different. They're going to be some of them behind us and stuff. But let's see what happens. Sphere is not defined. Well, that is correct. Because we're calling it that. Okay, so is there anything interesting here? We're here. Cool. Nothing. And so we're going to be... Originally we looked at 300, so one might be too close. In fact, I think we have our... Uh, we do have our near set to one, so it might be things that are uh, right there. Point one. Well, okay. Let's just bump these up by a little bit. Let's say bump them by 300. Okay, so there we go. And... Once again, the brilliance of nothing. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out what we've done wrong here. We... Did we add the camera to the scene? I think we did. Um, we did define the mesh material, we defined sphere material, which if we didn't we would have gotten a warning. Um, we added a bunch of spheres, well why don't we see if we actually did that. Let's, maybe something went wrong there, although I don't think it did. This is kind of, our spheres are sort of ugly, but they exist. There they are. And yet, they're not going to show up for us. Um, well, debugging tip. Let's, we know we can see a sphere if it's at negative 300 on the z-axis, because we did that as a test. So why don't we just use that now? Uh, and actually, you know what? I think I see what's wrong. Um... I actually have to say position X, Y, Z. I cannot just give it as an array. So let's see if that helps. Learning with Barry. So we want that. We want that. And I think... I don't think we need that there. So we, we, we need to create an object, not, a, not an array. Because, well, that's how it works. Okay, now, oh, I probably shouldn't have console logged them all. Next time I'm just going to console log one of them. Uh, okay. And now, as you can see, we still have nothing. 
So something went wrong there. I think we're doing this position equals x is this, y is that, z is that. Okay. Not cool. Let's just look at sphere zero. And so we do have it going all the way to request animation frame update, render, and just keep doing that as fast as JavaScript will allow. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing anything. So let's see what the uh, sphere is. It's all there and good. And position Z should be. Um, wow. That's a lot. Oh, right, because we we're drawing a, a polyhedron. Um, okay, so. This is interesting. Whatever the hell I did. Thing to note here is you can find there's a there's a place where it says position and the position is still uh, zero 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 right there. Um, now I do remember vaguely having before to do it as separate variables. For some reason you can't change the whole position at once. So let's try that. Of course we don't want to lose our wonderful code here in case it ever works. Um, and we should make it that, same things we had for before. And then we are going to, of course, cut and paste with an extra new line for some reason. Okay! 93 thousandth time is the charm. Nothing there. Um, let's see what the console log for sphere zero. I'm obviously making some very simple, stupid mistake. But I gotta find it because I can't continue without it. Okay, position is still uh, zero, zero, zero. So this is kind of weird. So let me. Uh, let's see. So I know I've done this before. This this actually should work. Um, so something's going on here. So let's do that. And I probably should unlog uh, sphere zero because. Okay. Well, that looks correct. Um. Let me see if I'm doing another console log that's messing me up somewhere. Mm, don't appear to be. Keep looking though. Wait, oh, that's just for. Yeah, let's comment it out. Comment it out. Okay. Well, my wonderful spheres are exactly where they should be. But we can't seem to draw any of them. And did we do it? We did do it and add them to the scene, and the scene we added them to is the scene we defined earlier. Um, okay. So now we're going to go one step back in debugging. We noticed that this worked. So why don't we just... The only thing we're going to do to all of these spheres is we're going to... Okay, I know what's wrong. Um, math random, of course, will give us a number between 0 and 1. This gives us a number between 0 and 300, but it, those spheres are all going to be a ahead of us, or sort of in just one part, one octant of the, uh, of the three-dimensional space. So let's go ahead and fix that by minus 150 them. Now they should be spread out pretty much across the whole uh, area. And there they are. Let's take a look at them from over here. Again, it's random, so this will be a different... Um, yeah, they're right in our frickin' faces, aren't they? So maybe we should make them smaller, or move them further away, which is the sort of standard thing we do. Um, 
So what did we set the radius to earlier? I think we might have set it to something really, really big. Let's do this. Oh, please tell me I set radius. Set it to 50, and of course we're looking in a uh, sort of a zero one space. Uh, so obviously these these things are 50 times bigger than where they're you know how far they're located from us. So let's go ahead and fix that, and we're going to be we're not going to change the constant. We are going to just make this sort of a 0 0.01. So now let's do this. Do we have anything? Okay, and now the shears are all invisible. Um, it's, that should not have happened, but you know what? Let's try point zero one. Always a good number between. Okay, we see one of them, so I'm guessing that we need to probably increase the size a little bit to see them all. Um, or we can move them closer to us, but I'm going to go ahead and just make them a little bit bigger. Now we can see a few of them. Um, I think there's a way to make the spheres glow. So let me try turning off the point light. Um, so we're going to leave it all alone, except for we're just not going to add it to the scene. And I think this will do something. It may just do nothing. And reloading here. Nope, does nothing. So we probably do need that point light. Um, let's see. Now there is a way to make them glow, actually. I don't necessarily know it, but there should be a way to make the spheres glow from the inside. Um, and actually, I sort of know where I'm going to have that. That's going to be sort of in my GitHub pages, because uh, I do have a working which I might probably should just show you guys, just so you know I'm lying. Um, okay, let me go ahead and just bring up that page. We can actually steal code from it. Um, Now this should just say greetings visitor. Nope, this isn't a GitHub pages site. Okay, stand by. Uh, okay, here we are. Really have to sort of... Nope, still doesn't work. And is that because I said maps? It's a map, yeah. Yeah, we can just do this for days, I think. Um, right, because I'm actually looking for BC test 3D. Wow. Probably doesn't even. There we are. So this is actually um, this is actually OSM plastered onto a sphere. Uh, there is no light source. Uh, the sphere is uh, sort of glowing from the inside because of the texture, and uh, you know we can. This is we can zoom in on it. We can we can't zoom in too much though because it doesn't work. Uh, we can you know sort of move around here like this. Blah blah blah. blah. This is something else I'm working on. We're not going to do that here unless someone wants to. And if I can tell, if according to the um, the stream, there's n literally no one here. So haha, -ha, I get to do what I want, which I would anyway. Okay. So I happen, to, I happen to know where my code for that is. In fact, we could just do a view source. I'm not going to, but we could. Um, and I'm pretty sure it just depends on the... Um, okay, mesh basic material. I'm almost sure I don't have a point light on this one. And what am I using here? Am I, oh, you know what? I'm using Mesh Lambert, which tries to be reflective. 
So in this case, I'm going to change it so globally, and I'm going to do something terrible here, which is I'm going to change a constant, which I think JavaScript will allow me to do. Whoa. Didn't like what I just did. Failed to connect. Retrying. Okay, this is rep that does have some issues, just so you know. Um, but usually it's pretty reliable. Um, kind of lost where I was, but it's, uh, it's fear material. Here we are. Um, so that's what happens when you do something terrible. Now, I'm going to redefine a constant, which, if it doesn't allow me to, I'll... I'll um, so what we want is not mesh Lambert material for the glow-in-the-dark effect. Um, okay, we get it. Um, but we want base, uh, what's called mesh basic material. And that should be uh, what we... That should do what we want. Wow. And stars aren't white, but we're going to pretend they are, since we now have a dark background. We're going to do that. Now, I'm going to feel terrible about this, but it should work. And it doesn't. So, so what is the console saying? This set values is not a function. Nice. That's an error in something else completely. Um, so, what have. Does this actually break that? It should not. Oh, yeah, because it's a constant. Okay. And you would get in trouble for that. So let's just say let sphere material equal this. Oh, it doesn't like it. Okay. So what happens if I leave it? I probably don't actually need to. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, obviously, I need to create one. This is uh, just... Uh, this th there could be a constant, but it isn't really. So we'll do this, create it, and there we go. We have a couple of nice white stars. Of course, this doesn't prove anything because uh, this doesn't prove anything. Of course, because we still have our point like I think going on. Where did our point light go? Oh no, we don't. Okay, so we've killed off our point light. We do have our white spheres going on now. Let's see what happens if we add the point light. They should turn sort of reddish. But it, it's going to depend on how far they are from the point light. Because it, the point light acts like a real point light, and it, uh, it uh, you know, reddens depending on distance. So let's re-add our point light. Let's do that. And see what happens. And we have apparently no real effect. And these things are too, still too, so screw the point light. Okay. Um, I don't really want to make them too much bigger. But I think we'll have to. Oh, man. They should be, like, right in our face unless we're doing something seriously. Oh, right, because I actually did this uh, 300 thing. That's why. Um, hmm. Okay, if we're going to go up to 300, we might as well make the radius back to 10. That should be more useful to us then. Okay, and we'll look, look over here. And lovely, we have all these spheres with uh, distance from us. Uh, again, not great rendering because we're using just sort of a white uh, basic material here. But, uh, but you know, we have the spheres. Okay, so now um, we want to find out where to put the spheres uh, based on positions of the actual stars. Um, or I can distract you with something else, which is... Yeah, let's actually create controls to move our camera around. And let's be somewhat obnoxious here and create spheres that um, change in color Listen to the whole thing, it's good. Um, and we're actually going to populate the 10 by 10 by 10 grid with a thousand spheres. Uh, so you could apparently run for president. 
um, and they, their, their color will depend on their position. And that will actually give us a much better idea of what we're looking at. And then we're going to add camera movement uh, as, a, as an option for the, as a control uh, for the camera. And we can move the camera around and we can look at different points. It's going to look ugly because it turns out that in real life we don't think of cameras as moving in XYZ and look at, um, as far as I know. Uh, so so let's, let's see what that does. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save this because it is working and it's pretty good. All right, so what we're going to do here, you could do this in, um, you could actually do this with one, uh, one loop because that's just a fact of life. That's just a, uh, math, that's a Turing machine fact is you can do, you don't ever need, you, you don't ever need nested loops. And I'm probably lying about that. But we're going to use nested loops. 10 by 10 by 10. I'm hoping that uh, JavaScript can handle this. If it can't, we'll need to reduce the number of, of loops. Um, we still do want them in an array. Except now... Still call them... S s um, now we're just going to have to call the count equals zero, because we, we actually... Um, let's be clever. Count starts at negative one. Count starts at zero, but we're going to increment it at the same time as we create the, the sphere, which is just completely pointless. But, you know... Um, and then we're pretty much just going to cut and paste this code, which I do need to actually remove at some point with a few minor changes. Um, by the way, we've had no viewers in the stream throughout the stream, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so, new sphere, so we're going to just create the new sphere there. Um, in this case, now again, spheres count, not spheres I. This is where you kind of get confused here a little bit. And and in this case, we, we actually know what we want our... Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do that. Okay. Whoa. In this case, we actually know we just want them to be i, j, and k. Cause that is... Um, and there's a really clever thing you can do here that... Um, where you can delete all three of them because they happen to be the same at the same time. That's a replit feature that I don't know how to use. So, there we go. And again, because we're using um, 0 to 10, we will need to adjust some other stuff here in just a second. Um, and then... I'm not going to console log it. I'm just going to add it to the seed. Um, and let's see. 3 mesh, 3... Sphere material. Are we still using the sphere material we want? Yes, we are. Basically, we will need to change this because we are going to change the colors on all these things. But at least this will let us look at what is hopefully sort of a nice layout of spheres. Uh, or, alternatively, nothing. Because once again, we should not be drawing 0 to 10. We should be drawing minus 5 to 5. Because again, we're looking at the, um, I don't know where the hell we're looking, but we're not looking in the positive octant, which all three of these numbers are positive. And we're going to learn more about where we're looking at once we get some stuff going with the camera. And so now, as you can see, absolutely nothing. And why is that? Radius equals 10, probably too big. Um, the radius 1. Brilliant. Okay. So we can figure out what's going on here. Oh, this is really nice. Uh, this is actually why you shouldn't be doing what I just did. Because I would need the count variable again. Although that should not have had an effect on it. But you know what? Oh, and also the scene writing is... Uh, the sphere writing is, of course, count. Not, uh, not I. And I'm tempted to do a count plus plus here, 
But you know what? I'm just going to say can't, it's really not a great idea to do count plus plus anyway. Um, so let's do that. Do this and... I think we're right inside of a sphere. That's going to take a little time to load here. Yep, I think I put it right in the middle of a sphere. Let's see the brilliant stuff you learn here. Um, so let's not put a sphere on any of the zeros. That'll be like a little gap. And I could do i times j times k. This is really bad. This is the same way of saying if i or j or k is zero because it's a mathematical property. Um, and I don't, is it next or is it continue? I think it's continue in this language. All right, let's try that. That is not at all what I expected, but that is freaking cool. And I think it's because we're seeing really, really large spheres really, really close to us. Uh, not on top of us, because we, we, we... Did we set the camera position somewhere weird? Now, the camera position, I think, we're leaving at zero, zero, zero. Um, at one point, we did change it to be... Uh, no, I don't think we ever changed it. Okay, so that's pretty weird. So let's see if we can fix that by... Uh, radius equals one, probably not a good idea for spheres that are literally being placed one next to the other. This should give us a little bit of a better kind of a view. And there we go, this is actually a pretty... This is sort of what we would expect to see, as spheres receding in the distance. I'm going to go ahead and reload this page. Uh, things are slowing down a little bit for me. I'm uh, not sure why. So there they are, spheres receding in the distance. Um, not particularly useful for us right now because they're all the same color. And actually, I think I'm going to try doing a, putting a text there so we can actually... That, that might actually be more helpful than a sphere. Um, we could try to label the spheres <laughs> with numbers, but that might be going too far. So... I lied, we're not going to be looking at, uh, we're just going to be looking at numbers floating in space, which is easier. Um, so let's see. Um, text. And there, there is a way to add text buffer geometry. Text geometry. Um, yada, yada, yada. I think we can do this without fonts. This is, again, they, they tend to go too far on this sort of stuff. Okay, hang on one second while I try to kill off some processes that are apparently decided they're more important than... Um, well, no, that's OBS. That's got to run. So, apparently OBS is unhappy. Let me quickly check on it to make sure it's happy. Um, okay, no idea why it's unhappy. Screw it. Okay. So we're going to create a new text geometry. And the parameter, we don't even, I think we can do this without parameters. So let's go over here. And we're still going to call it sfs because we're lazy. A uh, new text geometry. And for right now, we're just going to print a thousand hellos. Or actually a f little bit less than that. Um, Okay, I'm skeptical as to whether this will work, but let's see what happens. Yeah, I think we need to do a little bit more to get these things to show up. Um, uh, let's see. Do we actually need an instance of three font, or can we not? Or do I want text buffer geometry? Wow. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, again, I have cheated, and I actually do... I think I have used text geometry. And we're going to now find out if I have by a cheat command. But I do remember doing this. In fact, I might be able to show you where I did it, where I just 
label the uh, various tiles in OpenStreetMaps. Not very exciting, but it does work. Uh, so let's see if I can... That might be in bclibtester on the uh, GitHub pages, uh, but then again it might not be. Okay, this this might be a little bit... You can't see what I'm doing, but... Um, this might speed things along here. I'm basically looking through a large collection of my files to see where the phrase text buffer geometry occurs, then I'll try for text geometry, which I might have been able to combine those searches, and then I'll look at that file and see how I did it there and repeat it here, because let's face it, reusing your own code is really the way to go. Um, of course, it might take forever to make the search, but you know, that is uh, that is just one of the risks you, uh, you take when you live stream. There's many risks you take. Uh, boring your audience is probably the biggest risk, and uh, I'm okay with that. So, because you know, it's not about you; it's about me. Um, okay, wow, this is taking longer than I expected. I sort of love it when I do stuff and totally forget how to do it. Um, that was sarcasm. I don't love it. Um, Yes. It would have been fantastic if I had piped that result somewhere. Because I just scrolled right past my screen, and... Let's... So we're doing it again now. It t should take less time now because of file buffering. Uh, the files it's opened are more easily available to the Unix operating system uh, than they were the first time because they were being opened for the first time. Uh, that is probably just total garbage, that what I just said. It's true, but it, it's not of use to you. Um, so we're once again waiting for this to happen. Uh, the stream is brought to you by, by me. And I guess Twitch, you could say, is brought to you by Twitch. And if I post it on YouTube, I guess it's brought to you by YouTube and Twitch. But no one's really sponsoring this stream. If you want to sponsor this stream, well, just go fuck yourself, because I'm not going to... I don't think I really want sponsorship on this stream. That was kind of cruel, so go fuck yourself nicely. Okay, still waiting on this. Um, it, it's going to be really sad if it turns out I don't really have, haven't really used uh, text geometry with 3D. Um, okay, now, aha, cleverly did output it to redirect it, and we have nothing. So that's not going to work. So now I'm going to look for text geometry, and I'm beginning to think maybe I need to follow an example. And in fact, I'm going to bring up a new frame. And you know, I think the uh, the um, text thing that I used was this neat really needs to go. This this could be so bad. Um, so text buffer geometry force is all one word, and. And someone is asking what the difference is. So, I'm trying to find a minimal sort of example without having to create too much overhead uh, crap. So, has this guy done it? It's, uh, can we run it? Can without can we do this ad? Bevel enabled. Yeah, whatever the hell this guy's doing, it's pretty pretty intense. So not of helping to me. Okay, that was a total waste of time. So apparently I've never done a text buffer. So we're going to do the thing I don't want to do, which is um, cut and paste from a uh, from a uh, from the, you know from their example. So God damn, this is ugly. Uh. You know what, I think I'm going to go one more here and see minimal example. Someone should really be creating more minimal examples. Minimal, okay, great, this is an awesome 
except it doesn't have the word text buffer geometry in it, so you know. Um, great, it's awesome how many things you can find that don't have one of the words you need. Um, no, I didn't mean that, I meant this. Alright, we're going to take one more shot at looking at this, and then we're going to uh, ugly cut and paste and maybe change things until we figure out what, what we're doing. Okay. Screw it, we're going to have to use text geometry. Um... So we're going to just cut and paste this bullshit. Oh my god. This is hideous. Um... No. We will tweak this. So we're going to do this outside the loop. Got a few blank lines, so we have some buffering around it. So this apparently loads a font loader. Blah, blah, blah. I don't even have a... F Let's see if this might not run. Text geometry... is not defined. Well, that's a problem. Uh, let's see if we can use text buffer geometry. We might be going totally crazy here. Okay. Text geometry is not defined. Not using it. But maybe text buffer geometry. So let's screw this. Um... We could try to put a texture on these that has the right color, but that's going to be ugly too. So let's make sure everything's still... haven't broken anything. Uh, which I have, of course. Um, you know what? Maybe this is the only thing I need to do. Okay, so that was the, the problem, of course, is whatever for whatever reason the 3JS I have doesn't have a text buffer geometry. So screw that. Meanwhile, let's see if this still works. And I think I have a saved copy of this, so I'm not going to... Taking a few seconds. Let's see if it holds up in over here. And there it is. They don't really look great as, as spheres, but... Uh, Take what the devil gives you. Okay, so... <coughs> excuse me. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new uh, basic material and we are going to start tweaking the colors. Um, if I can figure out how to change uh, integers to hex, which actually it's not that hard. Um, and in fact... You might be able to do it using decimal. Okay, so... Just chopping this out here. And I think we can reuse the variable. And over here... Um, so we're redefining sphere material each time, but I think that's okay, because once we actually put it into a sphere, it, it, it sticks with that sphere. It's not a reference to this variable, it's, an actu it's a natural copy of this variable. So, let's let's see if I can be really clever here and do this. Um, so, actually, hang on. That was a color, was a... Uh, this, is, this is just a uh, three-octet thing. So, yeah, so this is going to be basically I times 256 times 256, which, of course, I could put as 65536. So that really should set the uh, color to i comma j comma k, which of course won't work because I have. Uh, damn it. Yeah, let me let me be a little bit more clear there. Um, because i is between negative five and five, we want to add five to it, and that brings it between zero and ten, and we actually want the whole scale. So that brings. Um, so that's actually what brings i to 
the red component to being between 0 and uh, 250. Let's see, 5 plus 5, okay, 255. And we'll do the same thing with the green and the blue components. And that'll make it easier for us to just say red times blah blah. And that's J plus 5. That's K plus 5. And then this, this is going to be red plus green plus blue. So this should create a color. This is going to work. But if it did, this would be, look really nice. Oh. I, usually things don't work that nicely for me the first time around. Okay. So now, this is looking like it's pretty solid green. It's not, actually, because as we move out, we do change colors. Um, so now, do I want to put the zero spheres back in because I made them smaller? No, because the zero sphere is going to get... Well, actually... I think the only one I may need to exclude is zero, zero, zero. But let's see what this does. Because I think that's going to end us in the, literally in the middle of a sphere. Oh, actually it doesn't. That's actually really nice. Or if it does, it's not showing it to us because we have a minimal camera radius set. Okay, not as helpful as I would have liked. Um, so this is cyan, which is uh, green and blue combined. Uh, that would be 0, 1, 1. Um, let's have the camera look at the origin, where our sphere should be just like one shade of gray. So let's see if we can do that. Um, and we definitely don't need to do that in a, um, in a loop. So let's do... Uh, I forget if this is take three parameters or one, but this time I'm pretty sure I can actually get that. Because, um... Uh, no I can't. I can't stand by. Oh fudge, some of my Java code is in... is in HTML files, of course. So that search I did earlier, totally pointless! Okay, and actually it has to be a... wow. Let's try this, it won't work. But then we'll see why. So nothing there. Console should be complaining um, that I look at doesn't take three parameters. It should, but it doesn't. And it, I don't think it takes an array either, but we'll try that. And it doesn't even take x, y, and z, by the way. So just to F with it. Not happy. And the undefined actually is because I'm calling something that doesn't exist. Okay, here's how you have to do it. It's really ugly. You have to create a vector, a three element vector called that's equal to zero zero zero. So like this basically. And I had to cheat and look at my old stuff for this. So you can actually do this. I'll obviously if you're gonna use it frequently you might want to call it something else. Um this should do the trick. So either we were already looking at zero 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 or something. Um, okay. Um, so we're looking at the origin, but we're apparently at at an angle where we actually are looking down on 1 comma 1. So that means we are, the camera is, I guess, outside of 1 comma 1. Although it's possible this isn't a purely cyan screen. Let's improve things, quote unquote, by increasing our, so we're going to create sort of a fisheye effect here. Let's pop up our angle a little bit. Our angle of view is uh, 45, that is in degrees, by the way. Um, Let's, again, abuse JavaScript and make the angle 90 degrees. This is going to give us a little bit of a, a fisheye effect, but let's take a look. And le guess what? Yes. Oh, invalid assignment, so this is just going to be let. Now let's try it.
this should work. Let's see if this works. This is again doing nothing to it, but but just making sure that we haven't broken what we had before. And I think we have. Oh no, we're fine. It's still working. Uh, this might be a glitch in Replit. Uh, they don't have the, the best servers. Sorry guys, you don't. Um, and they do tend to tweak things inconveniently at times. I'm going to do a reload here. There we go. And that you sometimes fixes the problem. Um, okay. And you'll notice all of our stuff's being done in script.js. We might tweak it. Well, very little is being done in index. It's only where we created the container. Okay, let's see if we can still run this. Or we're going to get screen freeze. Okay, I might need to do something about this. But I don't know what. Okay. Um, change the view angle to 90. There is a limit to how far a perspective camera's angle can go, and it will complain if you reach that limit. Okay, there we are, reloading. Okay, so now we've got a better view. Uh, the camera is looking at the origin, I think from like the northeast of the origin. Um, Let's go a little bit crazy and put the camera at the origin, which we can certainly do. Now, if we put it at the origin and we're looking at the origin, that's undefined, but we'll fix that in just a second. Um, so, where do we... I don't think we moved the camera's position. Okay, things are getting really slow. I might ha I'm going to go ahead and look to see if we can kill some abusive processes that are not OBS itself. Okay. This might actually kill uh, the replit itself. And I'm right. It did. Awesome. I'm so glad that it had killed also my chat. So I'm going to restore this tab, restore this tab. I'm only going to restore the ones I need, which will hopefully be the correct thing to do here. And that should keep the, uh, the load fairly low. Okay. So now we have this. Um, we're going to tweak the camera, uh, which we have done before. I think we did adjust the camera position. We have to do it with some reason for comma y, x comma y. That's the spheres, actually. But we did change the camera position at one point. Yeah, camera uh, position x, y, z, and then look at. So we're going to create a crazy undoable camera right now and hopefully it won't complain because it, it sort of knows that and we're going to do something a little bit clever than after we do this uh, we're going to move the camera back along one of the axes all right so now the camera's at zero 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 looking at zero zero which is undefined hopefully it, they'll let us get away with it and they have awesome okay so now um, I'm not really sure why that worked, but, so now what we can do in our update function, we're going to move backwards on the x-axis, and we're going to look at 0, 0, 0, but again, we'll do it correctly this time, um, except not that correctly, because I really am not going to save that. I'm going to still create a new another new vector, which I could have just used the one we already had. But you know what? I don't care. So, there's that. Um, and by the way, we are moving towards creating controls, so we don't have to keep changing the code to do things. Uh, again, this is, we're just sort of in testing right now. Um, wow, I think that actually went exactly, let's go ahead and format our code a little bit. Now, let's see what happens. We should be moving backwards along the x-axis. Um, while it's just taking a while to render, we might need... To, okay. Okay. So as we move along the x-axis, we are not getting anything we expect. We're getting sort of shifting cyan and blue. 
Um, which means I probably set up the uh, the coloring incorrectly. Um, kind of cute. Kind of looks nice. Um, by the way, XYZ in the view is not going to be enough to rotate the camera. You can rotate the camera also. Uh, we're not doing that right now. So let me see what I did wrong with the colors. Although, I, you know, you got to admit, this looks pretty nice and it's probably worth saving. So I will save it. Um, so let's see. We do still want to move along the X-axis. So let's see what I did with the colors here that apparently broke things. Although, ah, yes. Red, green. Apparently this worked, though. Um... And these numbers should go between 0 and 10, with 0, 1. Okay. Well, this looks so cool, I don't even really care. Um, I'm going to now, let's do the, let's move backwards in the Y direction. Which, if I were actually, if I actually cared, this would actually help us debug why the colors are wrong. But I don't. So this is just going to be shiny. Okay, a little bit different colors here. Not quite as good looking. So now while we're doing this, we might as well learn about how to rotate the camera um, and add controls. So eventually we will, we will be able to just sort of do this with uh, without having to, you know. It looks cool when you animate it, but really we want to have the option to really be anywhere and look anywhere. Um, and the rotation we probably don't need right now, but it is something we can do. Um, and let's see if this is being helpful to us. This is a replica. I don't want to kill that. Um, 3JS, right? This is just cheating. I, I've done this before and I don't remember what the command was. Uh, how to rotate a camera. Uh, and and look at doesn't quite do what we want actually camera rotate x y and z well see there that's how simple that is um apparently for some reason camera rotate is going to work in radians uh that's weird that shouldn't happen so i'm going to pretend it's not happening and we can reload to see this uh, sort of cool background fade out in full size. And it is a video, so let's do that. So let's actually... Okay, and it's going to actually slow down the computer. Nice. Um, so a thousand spheres of light might be too many. Uh, let's, I'm going to bump it down to... Uh, so if it can't even do a thousand, we're, it's, we're not probably not going to get rendering for 2,000 stars, which, if you have forgotten, is the original point of this uh, piece of crap. Um, okay, let's bump down the number of spheres first. I think that we are pushing this too much and also will actually help us with um, with figuring out what we're doing wrong. Uh, so let's see, we're going from... and I'm going to be lazy and say... so we can go from minus num to plus num and we can change it anytime we want. So this will give us... Um, 5 times 5 times 5, or 125 spheres, so that should be a considerably less number. And I like to test, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, even though we haven't really done anything yet. And there we sort of go. Wow. That should not be trying your uh, CPU, dude. And there we see 125 points of light. And I've done the joke already, so we won't do the joke again. I might, actually, because I tend to repeat my jokes, like from 60 years ago. Okay, so there we have a smaller, uh, sort of a, a, a bunch of spheres. And this really does suggest I messed up something. In fact, the colors look so similar. Okay, awesome, it's happening here too. It'll just fade out in the distance. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate 
and find it. So here we're actually moving the camera's Y position, minus one. I'm going to try doing, instead of doing that, we can, um, and instead of doing this, we're just going to try the camera rotation stuff. And we're going to do it like this. So let's see, camera, rot I once figured all this out, by the way. Um, and I forgot it all. So this will, let's see if we can rotate the camera like this. So that's that's pretty cool. We are. It'd be cool if we knew like where we were rotating it to, but that just seems like sort of a unnecessary step there. Um, let's try it just for fun with a um, changing the Y position of the camera, and I think. This is going to, well, the one of them gives you, just makes the everything circle instead of changing the, what we're seeing. This is going to change sort of the, uh, the azimuth. The other thing changes the altitude. And Z will change something that doesn't necessarily have a name. It's going to change, this, everything's going to spin, but you're not going to see new dots. You're just going to see the existing dot spin. And that is, uh, that is a, or you're going to see nothing. And sorry, that's because I'm sitting camera rotation Y, which is bad. Do this. You see everything spin. Uh, this is a third kind of uh, a rotation that doesn't correspond to latitude or uh, longitude. So we, we have this going for us. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now, fun, fun. Um, let's actually create some controls. Let's actually have. Uh, let's actually have uh, you know be able to control where our camera is. And and uh, where it uh, and how we can change it. So we will do that over here. Uh, we will do that above the uh, 3D thing, I think. Um, boy, that's annoying. We're going to just look at the console instead. Um, so we're going to do that by creating, let's say, some uh, plus and minus buttons. Uh, we did this actually on the other uh, the other uh, video that I did. So it's not that hard. Um, by which I mean it is hard. And let's see. Jesus Christ. Um, no, oh, I guess I created a grid last time. I did create a button somewhere. Um, and I will find it. If not today, well, uh, hopefully today. See what we're doing here. And I don't think it was with um, it was actually with my maps code, which we could cheat and look at, and we will. Because let's face it, if you can't use your own code, you can use better code. But anyway, so I'm going to Replit. This is my home. And it's very clever that they tell me this. My REPLs, I'm only going to use the one I used before on Twitch, called Twitch OSM Leaflet. Which. Okay, so we have a button. We're not going to call them North, South, East. Well, we could actually. Um, So let's copy that. Let's actually let's see. We want them above the container. Um, and for right now, let's just do plus x. We're gonna stay in the plane, man. Minus x plus y and minus y. Uh, and now we need to add a listener, so right now they're just buttons. So right now if we ran it, we would just see some nice buttons that don't do anything. So we will add listeners to them. Um, if I remember correctly, what I did last time, and I'm, when I'm looking at it, I keep forgetting you can see my screen, is I actually added one listener for all of them, which is actually okay, because we're gonna, it's, we're gonna depend on which button it is. Um, so let's see how I did this. Um, so 
So basically I just got all the buttons, added a listener to them all, one at a time, using a for loop, and I set the um, I set the target to be view controller. And that's actually not a bad idea. I'll probably do that here too. So this is going to set it. Let's do this actually one at a time. A little bit slower than that. So back to our script JS. Now what we could do here, and what I've done with some of the longer programs, is we could add um, listener separately. And in fact, I'm going to do that, uh, calling it listener. JS. And again, we do have to be careful that we add the listeners before we call the main script. But I think that we can do that. And this is, you know, just it's a bit more helpful. Probably should have called it listeners.js, but you know, whatever. And before I forget, we do want to include it um, probably before script.js, because those things do need to be defined. Okay, so our listener.js it's going to listen to all the buttons, we, and we are going to need to add text boxes because we are going to put in values of where the camera is. For right now, we're going to not do that, though. Okay, and then what I did here, I'm pretty sure, is, uh, well, the view controller takes whatever whatever it's been called with and does this. Uh, so for us... Uh, if we're going to get the button string. We're looking directly at the button string, which is actually not ideal. But um, let's let's run this, and we'll take a quick look here at what our button strings. Whoa, whoa, did I not change them? I did not. In fact, I changed the button ID, which I didn't need to do. And in fact, probably putting a plus under is a bad idea. But I did not change the button string. Okay, so we can do that now. And this is not very interesting, of course, because uh, we don't have, the listeners aren't... E okay, so now what we're going to say is if the uh, plus x um, I'm going to be really careful here because we are going, we actually need to call this after we call um, script.js because the, these things won't be uh, the camera and stuff won't actually be defined yet. So that's we do that. And so now we're going to say um, camera, which is going to be the global coming in from, from uh, script, position dot x plus equals move amount. So just to keep things, uh, you know, so we can change it really quickly if we want to. And the remaining is going to be so close to this it's, that it is to the existing code. We're going to do this. If it's y, we add y a little bit there. If it is minus x, we subtract the move amount. And if it is minus y, we decrease the y by the move amount. And of course, we don't need these anymore. Update view is the function I had in that uh, in that program. Here, we just need to call the update function, which we know is uh, which we know is correct, which we know is the one that we've created for this. Now, let's see if this works. It probably won't. Nothing I do actually ever works. So if I do this, oh well, for some reason it's actually working. A little bit... Okay, so we're moving the camera here. Now the problem with this, of course, is we, we're going to add a Z component as well. Uh, let's do that right away. And then the problem with this, of course, is we don't know what our X, Y, and Z values actually are. Uh, so we actually need to, uh, need to add a little bit of a sort of a checkbox. Uh, or a text box, maybe not a checkbox, that tells us what the X, Y, and Z positions are, and maybe we'll clean it up a little bit by putting the buttons next to the text box, instead of putting the buttons first, and you know, then the, uh, then the, then the, then the text. Okay. Um, uh, there's a lot of choices here, and. Oh, you know what? Actually, we could use a slider, but that, that's a slider is a control. Never mind. Um, so we could have used a slider here that lets us change the x, y, and z values, and I think a slider might actually tell us where you are too. But always good to experiment. So let's try a um, text entry. I think is what they're called. Boy, I should know this. Um, huh. 
Uh, hang on one second here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of an SVG element, so you can't. I can't do what I was thinking of doing. Well, let's just go crazy here and say input type. We're going to need to change the length text. Um, I don't know if you need both a name and an ID. Equals x. We'll just call it x actually. Um, slash input. I think that is the correct to create it, but unfortunately, it creates a um, a mutable text area which we don't want, and it's way too big, we can fix the bigness though. Um, there is a way to make it immutable, and I don't know what that is, so, aha. Uh, actually, it's probably not that, and we'll make the size like 4. So, so that does, wow, I don't know why I reloaded my code, but hey, that's kind of cool. Um, I did not break everything by that line. It's HTML, it shouldn't break anything. Alright. Whoa! Wrong one! Wrong one! It's meant to be here. Okay, yeah, there we are. So it's looking fine. And when we do minus X, it does move the camera, it does... So now what we need to do here, just to make sure we got it right before we do it for Y and Z, uh, and before we clean it up a little bit, um, we need to add a listener for, I'm going to say for all the input types. Um, n actually, no, we don't, because we can actually refer to this by its ID and set its ID value. Um, its ID happens to be X. So here, we don't need to actually read it, we do need to write it, though. So here, uh, let's see. I want to make sure we get the right element. It's going to be let x text. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, get element by uh, document get element by ID. Okay. Query selector all. Let's let's be correct and get element by ID. Uh, this might not work though. <laughs> That's why people don't use it. And we're going to console log what X text is, and it should be a text box and all this good stuff. Um, and this is actually going to come out, and we're putting it in the view controller. That's okay because we're still just experimenting, which means we will have to press a button. Let's see what this does. I need to stop logging that, whatever the hell that is, and I think that is my um, the random spheres I'm creating, not even using. I don't think anymore. Um, Whoa, am I? Um, cause that looks weird. Oh, here it is. Um, wait. So apparently I'm still creating them, but, uh, not adding them to the scene. And, uh, apparently it doesn't interfere with this. So that's good. Uh, it's always good. Okay, that was not helpful. I'm sorry. As I said, we need to do this before something happens. HTML input element. So it looks like we've got the uh, the correct thing here. Um, let's go crazy and see if we can just do set value, which I'm sure won't work. But um, some variation of oh, actually set value. Oh, what can we set? And I think. This has to be a string. Oh, eh, you know what? Maybe it doesn't have. To. It'll parse. Or it'll pff, parse. It'll uh, it'll cast. Okay, didn't like that. X test set value is not a function. Awesome. Um, now console log X test doesn't tell us a lot about it, but there is another function that I wrote earlier in VC lib, uh, which I have a, a library that I've written. And we are going to, as I expected, we would have to. And the staging library, which does something similar, these are available in my GitHub, so not not secret. We're going to add these to the library because they have a, a sort of a var dump-like function, which gives you more information about an element than console log will. 
So let's upload file. I don't know if you can see this, but hopefully nothing dangerous there. BC lib. Upload file. BC lib staging actually has a lot of the good stuff in it right now because I'm very lazy about moving stuff over. And let's go ahead and move that into lib. That into lib. And let's go ahead and include that stuff. Uh, and we want to include it fairly early because it is a library. Okay. And I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a, I did the var dump function. I might have called it something else. I might have called it actually um, just dump. So let's see if I can find it in here. Wee, tons of crap. Apply. Debug. Place tiles on map. Well, that's not really it. Transparent debugger. Um, Use a stringify. It takes two parameters. Uh, one is the object you want to debug, and the other is just a string to, to sort of to sort of print it, um, just to print a string so you can identify what you're doing, which is a little bit better than just debugging and not knowing what you're debugging. So let's go back over here, and we will. Did I actually do a console log there, or I do do a console log? So it's TD transparent debugger. Uh, it's really cool because you, it actually returns what you sent it, so you could use it inside of a, uh, a, a inside of a nested function. Um, so we want to look at X text, and we'll say X text. That's kind of useful. And when I say useful, I mean it is not. A, oh, you know what? It actually. Hang on, it's supposed to console log. Oh. That didn't work. Why the hell not? Um. Well, 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 well. In fact, the console log didn't work. Oh yeah, because once again, as I've said three times and keep forgetting, you have to click on one of the buttons to get this to work. It's not looking good. Um, okay, so now maybe we're not getting an element at all. So I'm going to test this by just typing in garbage here. If we get the same result, it means what we actually got wasn't an uh, input element. Okay, so I did get the input element. And now it's being stupid. Uh, there's other ways of doing this that are so much uglier. There's a dump function around here somewhere. This is actually something I copied from someone else, which is cool. But it doesn't actually do quite what we need. There is a dump function in here, that I think, that does exactly what we need. A lot of this stuff is for uh, slippy tiles. So let's see if I have a dump function. No results. For here. Yeah, var dump. And this one definitely returns a string. It does not, uh, it doesn't print anything. So, I didn't need to do that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to console log not text, but var dump of x text. And this better be, this should be good stuff. Well, isn't that special? So let me go ahead and uh, once again, I need to actually not do that. There we go. Set up, step down, check validity, except there's a lot of functions this thing has. Um, one of which I think set text might be the method we're looking for, but let's. This is a lot of crap in here. So let's look at the set methods. There's a lot of crap you can do with the text entry box. Did you know that? Okay, so let's go ahead and look for the set methods. Set customs, let you know. Um, set range again, set selection range. Data set. Offset parent, set top. Boy. Set attribute. 
don't think it's an attribute though. Attribute, attribute, set capture. It's an attribute node. It's gonna take forever. Is text like maybe a Hmm. Okay. Once more introspection to the rescue. We are going to put um a value in here, and now we're going to look for that value here because that's the thing we need to change. So this is actually going to be really helpful. So now, somewhere in this, uh, this uh, once I do this, uh, there should be the number 42. So let's see what that is. That's not cool. Your text is 42. You should have that in here somewhere. Maybe I need to be like... Pfft. Okay. That did not help. Um, now, actually, I think it is value that we're looking for. So let's see if we can find that. Not Okay, so value, this should not... This is kind of bad. Um... Value, value is number. Okay, well, see if we can uh, see if there's a set value. There is not. So again, JavaScript has this sort of inconsistency between when it uses set, setter, and getter methods and when it just lets you edit the field directly, and that is one of the almost infinite number of bad things about JavaScript. Um, so x text value equals hello. Let's see if that changes it. And see if that doesn't give me an error. That does not log out the text, which is kind of weird. Oh, because once... Hey, that worked! Awesome. So this is... Uh, we're very happy with this. And also, I just realized putting a 42 here is totally incorrect, because that is... Um, that's not how input uh, text entries work. Okay, so now we are going to... Uh, do something more useful. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and create this for Y and Z. We are going to need to move these around in just a second, by the way, but that's not going to be right away. Okay, uh, so what we actually want to do here is we want to... And we're going to do this for Y text. We're going to do it after we move the camera, because we're really more interested in the position after we've done something with it. Uh, we might add a null positioner thing that you can just click the button, just in case you want to, and see what the sort of uh, current value is without changing it. You shouldn't have to do that because obviously it should be up to date anyway, but you know, whatever. Okay, so now after we've done this, yeah, the update actually updates the 3D stuff, so we can't, we probably should do this here. X text value, um, camera position X. Now this is actually a number, but I I think JavaScript will be able to cast it into a um, into a string, which is a, and actually I think that it might not even need a string. So y text value, z text value equals this and this, and let's see if Bob is my uncle. We'll take the blood test. Console is giving us something. So. That's pretty damn neat, except for the uh, decimals, because floating point arithmetic is not exact, as everyone in the world will tell you. So this is the um, this is where the camera is. We also want to be able to change the look to of the camera. And by the way, just one thought I had is I think there is a place uh, where you can actually do exactly what I'm doing, uh, but a lot easier. So I might have been recreating someone's work. Uh, there is a place where you can look at 3D, 3JS elements, uh, like perspective camera, and mess around with them. Uh, so I'm redoing work, but I'm okay with that because, uh, you know, we're all learning, or I'm learning, or no one's learning. We don't really care. Um, so let's go ahead now and add... Let's go ahead and clean up the things we said we were going to clean up, such as where we put the uh, text boxes, where we put the buttons, and obviously we need to add one for Z. Okay, so we're going to put the... Um, X button first, then the input type for X. Oops, I meant to do actually control X. Ha ha ha. Very strange. 
Uh, and the both, of course, buttons for X are going to come before X. I don't know if there's an automatic break being done with an input type, but apparently there is. So I'm going to just leave it like this. Uh, there's the buttons, and there is the text ID. We'll go ahead and group these together. And finally, we will allow you to change the Z position. So now we've got some controllers going, and we know where the position is, and we don't know what we're looking at yet, but that's... Um, so let's see if we're ready to rock and roll with this. In fact, I'm so excited about this. Let's do it on the... Um, over here. And there's not apparently a... Um, Z should take us in or out. Wow. That's not cool because we didn't have the code for that. So I forgot to update listener. Hmm. Yep, I did forget to update listener. Ha! Screw me. So we're just going to take this one. And if you're wondering um, whether this could be done better, for example, instead of having to write six if statements, you could just write... Uh, one if statement, uh, you know, just sort of read the string and convert it to a uh, variable, a field, uh, the answer to that is, I don't care. But probably yes. So now... Right, so Z is zooming us in and out because we are looking down at... Clearly something has gone wrong. Uh, we cannot go up because I have screwed up the code. Camera position. If it's plus, we do actually want to move plus. We want to be consistent. Okay. So now these, it does look like they're all going to go on one line, which is actually sort of nice because uh, I want as much real estate as possible for the, for the, um, for the the three. Oh, that is freaking cool. Let's do that again. Uh, <laughs> as no one ever says. Um, So that ball is forming right in front of our face, which means it's pretty close to, probably actually point to, the Y position is probably, but this is really ugly. This is actually, if you look at it all the way, it's E minus, it's zero, but it doesn't look like zero. We will need to clean that up. So let's see if we, let's see if we can get back to just exactly inside the ball. So this is actually not inside the ball, but let's see what happens if we minus Z. Well, that is freaking cool. So I think that's the ball that is positioned at... It's a good question. Is it positioned at 20? Because I shouldn't be able to see it then. Okay. Um, another possibility we could do is we could allow them to change the text fields directly and then allow, if that happens, allow it to be... Uh, allow it to change the, um, change the view as well. For right now, I don't want to do that because I want to keep our view fairly consistent for everybody and not jump around everywhere. So now we want to be able to change what we're looking at. Very simple. Um, the hardest part is going to be deciding what variables we want to call these things. Um, okay. And this time I think we do need a new line for this. A break, as you would call it in your language. Um, so I think we can just copy this wholesale. We're going to change the, the ID, ID names, obviously, the rest of the work. Um, so what do we want to call this? C of X, C of X, the center of where the focus is. That's CX, I have decided, unilaterally. And um, CY, CY, I don't know why, CZ, CZ, which probably has a joke in there somewhere. Okay, cool, so now we have the extra buttons that we need. Don't do anything yet. Um, let's make sure, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a save real quick. So, it also would have been good, in fact, it would have been completely useful because we're looking at the button string, not the button's ID which also is wrong, but we're doing it anyway. 
to do this, so we now have, if we go over here to where it's full screen, we now have, um, well, that looks ugly, but it's tolerable. And again, we actually need to populate these buttons. Hang on, do we? Hmm. Do we actually populate these buttons before we do even the first move? That's kind of nice. Okay, and now what we want to do in listeners, because now we need to update these things with the camera look at position, which I just realized we may not know. Also, we need to get three more variables here. Let x... Oh, actually, I'm doing all element by ID, so that's actually good. I'm doing it the right way. Um, for the text boxes, apparently I'm still doing it the wrong way for the buttons. Actually, that's not true. I'm only doing it the wrong way for the buttons in the uh, where the buttons can change stuff, since the text boxes can't change anything. And now we want to know what the, uh, we should do it for one now. So this is going to be the camera look at value, but I'm pretty sure you can't just say camera dot look at dot X. I'm going to, but it shouldn't work. So this should break. Yeah, there we go. Oh. It's complaining about the fact that I used get element ID, which isn't a real thing. It's sort of get element by ID, which is in fact a valid function. So now let's watch it break in a different way. Okay, so we're seeing undefined here. Yeah. I think I think I've screwed it up enough from from yeah, you can't really change the cameras to look at. What I will do here is... One moment, please, while I do other stuff. Okay. What I will do here is I'm going to try to print out console log the camera and see where what, what the, uh, the uh, look at, what the variables are to tell you what the current look at is. And actually, hang on. Um, actually, we may have an answer to this already. So what do we do here? Camera, look at, okay, so that's actually, uh, so there's no such thing as get look at, or is there? Let's find out. Ah. New. Well, screw it. We're just going to console log camera and see what we can do. If we need to, we'll dump it. Run, run like the wind. Okay, and again, it's just hideous, by the way. Uh, UID type perspective parent children null up position rotation you know, there might not be a look at actually it might just change stuff magically we can deal with that we can deal with that Yeah, the look at might actually be too sophisticated of a function for us to be able to sort of just get it. We it might do it might just change some of this. I'm probably sure it changes like the rotation values and the matrix of transformation, uh, which lets it convert 3D positions into where they need to be on the screen. But we can deal with this because we can actually. Um, we can actually. 
keep saying we can actually. Interesting. So we can force the camera to look at zero, 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 and then just basically update it without actually doing what it is. Um, but you know what? Maybe I want to be clever here. Do we want to look at camera rotation, maybe? Um, so the cool thing is you can change the X, Y, and... Um, okay, I think I see it. Uh, the camera's rotation. So if you do minus X, so if you click the buttons, we can have it look at... Um, Yeah, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back over here. We're going to set the uh, default values of these things um, to zero. Boy, this is going to get ugly. I meant me, not, not the... Not the code um, set these to zero, and over here in the view controller, we we get these elements, and I'm pretty sure just like we can do a, we can actually just look at their values as numbers, hopefully, and I think we can let's see if we can do that. Xc dot value as number. I think I saw that, but let's. I'm going to just pretend we will be able to cast stuff when we need it. So... Zero is the value. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to... Um, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to basically get the elements by... The, we're going to set the uh, camera look at to those values. And if someone clicks the plus or minus buttons we actually change the uh, we actually change the values in the in the fields which automatically will change um, uh, yeah which will automatically change and also change the camera at the same time so uh, what we can do here so we have to be a little bit careful here because that means we have to uh, we have to update the values after we uh, we do the plus or minusing. So over here, this is ugly. This is in fact this is ugly enough. I want to put a little note to myself here to do make this less ugly. I think uh, we should be able to look at camera vectors and stuff, but you know this works. So what we're going to do is set camera, look at... Now in this case we actually are going to go and create a vector. New vector 3D. I think it's vector 3D. Let's... I, I have a very short memory span. I have a very short memory span. I have a very short memory span. Okay, 3.vector3. In fact, I probably should have just cut and pasted from there, which is what I'm going to do now. And it takes three components. And this is, again, one of the sort of inconsistencies, although this is at 3JS, this isn't, you know, regular JavaScript. And we're going to set this to be XC, YC, and ZC. No, we won't, because that doesn't make any sense. We're going to set this to be XC value, YZ value, and we might have to cast these as uh, floats. So, and then we can say camera look at, this is actually bad because we shouldn't be doing this every time, um, vector. Uh, I'm actually more curious to see if this is going to just give me an error. So 
if that gave me a console error. Okay, so we're getting kind of lost here, but okay. Um, right. So, one way to fix this... Uh, there's got to be a value as number, but let's... Let's see what this does. Okay, well, let's just try it with this, and if this doesn't work, uh, it doesn't work. So now we need more if button. I'm getting kind of tired of this myself now. Um, so we're going to do it off this one. Actually, we shouldn't because we're using... Um, no, we are still using buttons, aren't we? All right, so let's see what this does. Button string equal equals plus CX. So what we need to do is we're going to change the vector value. Um, and I don't want to create a new vector to do that. So we need to figure out what the method is for changing. Let's actually go ahead and do a console log on the vector, see what it looks like. I think we can just change its x, y, and z values directly, but I don't know what the hell we're going to call them. So we need to comment out this code. And we can probably comment out the code that we're trying to console log the camera because it is we're not going to find that method that we need there. The get look at method. Okay. I really need to stop doing this. X, Y, and Z is zero. So that is just beautiful. Um, so what we're basically going to do here is, and I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, we're going to make this a little bit different. I mean, we will allow it to be different. We don't necessarily want the, the movement to be the same in radians and, and degrees, that would make sense. Okay, so if button um, blah, 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 is this, then what we want to do is set vector, be real careful here, um, vector dot x equals vector dot x plus rotation. And I probably should have done... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just such an asshole. Yeah, you shouldn't really do all this all in one line, and you really shouldn't do what I'm about to do, which is this. Oh, that's beautiful, though. Um, okay. And we're just going to do it with X, CX right now. So that will change vector of X. So then we need to... We haven't done anything. We're going to now set the... Um, camera look at to vector, which may or may not have changed because we're doing this uh, update function for every button press, not just the ones that are related to the camera's um, rotation. So this will make the camera look one st step to the east. And now, this won't actually work because the next time this comes in, it's going to look at the values of uh, the S, C, X, and that they're going to be zero. So we do have to do this. Um, we, this is sort of the exact occup, op, the, today, on talking, this is sort of the opposite of what we're doing here, which is instead of assigning the vector values from the, uh, from the inputs, we're going to assign the inputs from the vector values. Isn't that clever? I think it is. Not really. So this is going to be, and again, this is, a we don't really need to do all of this because we know we're only changing one of these values at a time, but I'm okay with this. I'm actually okay with this. Um, I mean, it's ugly that we're using so many variables, but, you know, hey. And after all that magic has occurred, we update the uh, camera. Now, if this works, I will be very surprised. Also, I will be on the wrong page. Okay. And again, only plus CX is the only thing that works right now. Well, that, that worked. And for some reason, it is now this hideous thing because apparently... It is a string! Yay! I hate things so much. So apparently we are getting strings and we are just doing terrible things here. So we can't do this, basically. We can't assign because these are all strings. We can now... I know I saw a 
value is number, excuse me. So we're going to look for that. Uh, no, we're not, because we need to do a var dump. Because this thing is sort of icky. Oh, and again. Alright, so. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Text content. Oh, text content is actually something we could have done. But let's see. Node type, uh, uh, attribute node. Well, it's behaving not the way I want it to. Here we go. Namespace prefix. And if I get tired of this, I'm going to go directly. I know it's value is the thing we're looking at, and it's right next to value. Undocumented, maybe. All right, hang on. I'm just going to look for value. And we should all be looking for value in these economic times. Default value, value, value as number. Hate when that happens. Not a number. Okay. That's cool. Okay, 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 okay. Now, how do you cast an int? I think you can't do it the same way. JavaScript. Cast string to int. Probably one of the more... Parsent. That's why, I, and I did know that. Uh, I'm lying. I didn't know that. I did know that. Um, so, parsent... Um, this is just ugly, 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 but we could probably clean this up a little bit. In fact, we could have created an array of, uh, of, of buttons and an array of text entries. Uh, but for right now, we are going to use parsint. For right now, we're going to leave it the ugly way it is and use parsint to parse out the... Oh, wait a minute. That's not what I want. I want to cast string to double. Parse float. Well, see, it's it's so easy. And once again, I gotta forget that when I do the Google thing like that, it changes what page I'm on. In my other browsers, I have it set up so it opens a new tab when it does that. Um, so God help us, we are going to do parse float. Parse float. And this is getting to look really, really ugly. The only advantage is it might actually work, which is just kind of a minor issue. So let's run this and see what happens. Again, we've only assigned... Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now minus won't do anything. Well... That's, I don't know if this is, I mean, if we go past one, if we go past where that dot is, no, we should not be, this should not be, uh, oh no, this is the look at value, so this might actually be okay. This is the, uh, the um, uh, we actually need to do more of these, but I think we're just getting too ugly now, <laughs> we do need to do more of these. And once again, I will be... So let's do the pluses first. If it's CY or CZ or minus CX, I'm just going to put these in first because that's a good way to confuse myself. Uh, plus CY we add to the vector Y, of course. I wonder if we could have done a plus equals here. I'm not going to try it, but we might have been able to get away with the plus equals here. Um, minus... And rotation is actually the wrong word here because we're actually looking, we're changing the look at, not the rotation. Um, but I don't care. 
One reason I don't care is because, okay, let's make sure we got this right. Minus, 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 x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z, plus, plus, plus. And... Yes. Okay, let's now go ahead and do it on the big screen. Oh, again, I keep forgetting where I am. Okay. Let's go put that at zero. So now we're looking at the minus one point. So let's try to look um, straight up. We're looking straight up at Z. Now, if I change where our Z position is, okay, good. So what happens here is we're looking up the Z axis at at this point. Um, if I go past it. Um, I have no idea what that works. I'm looking up, and then I should be, if I move my z-axis up a little bit, uh, I am now looking just, this is a meaningless value. This is now looking down the z-axis. I'm on the 0 0.5 of the z-axis. And I'm looking down at the z-axis, but I don't know why that uh, funky... Uh, why that funky uh, cyan ball is there. So I believe I made my scale to be 0 to 2 or something. So let's... Okay, that's kind of cool. No idea what the hell that is. Okay. Now let's say from way up here I've decided I'm going to look at the... Uh, I'm going to look at the positive x-axis. Well, that's... It certainly seems to be working, I mean... And we actually should be able to get something out of this. God damn it. Okay. And I'm beginning more and more that we should actually um, make the text entries uh, allow you to change them because this is could be too painful and slow. So... Um, let's go ahead and do that in just a sec here, or maybe next time as it's getting kind of late on this stream. Um, and we probably need better labels on these things, although I'm not sure we can get those. Um, let's see. So, yeah. And then we'll be able to sort of look at stuff and, um, you know, if we're not... Our position is kind of weird now because it's like right along the line of an axis. If we do this, we might get better views of stuff, although these balls might be big enough that they still obscure. So we can actually look at the various uh, balls and spheres at different positions. Uh, but I think we're done for today. Uh, I'd like to thank no one for joining me. And hopefully if you're watching this on video, it won't help you either. Goodbye.